you're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Hollywood Star Time, direct from Hollywood. Tonight, the radio production of the exciting RKO picture, The Most Dangerous Game, starring Robert Cummings. <laughs> You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. And it is this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American kitchens have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. No other company can make a Frigidaire. Now, Frigidaire presents Robert Cummings, supported by Lorene Tuttle and Lou Merrill, in The Most Dangerous Game, with a musical score composed by David Watolf and conducted by Lionel Newman. The Most Dangerous Game. <laughs> Taking a cabin on one of those slow freighters which offers accommodations to tourists who aren't in a hurry to get anywhere. I was writing my latest book on big game hunting, and frankly, it wasn't going too well. After Gibraltar, it went even worse. For at Gibraltar, the Lady Diana came aboard. Her reactions to my attempts to make conversation with her as she sat on deck reading that day off the west coast of Africa was most discouraging. Mr. Rainsford... You're going to a great deal of trouble to make yourself known to me, and it's entirely unnecessary. I know who you are. Oh, but but really, I, I only You're meant Lance to... You're Lance Rainsford, author and big game hunter, and a dead shot for the most dangerous game. I'm properly aware of your fame and your romantic calling. So if you'll be good enough to let me read my book... Oh, I'm... Uh, I'm very sorry if I've annoyed you. I won't disturb you again. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Mr. Rainsford. Yes, Lady Diana? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rainsford. That was pretty shoddy talk from me. I, I hope you'll forgive me. I'd like to offer some reasonable explanation, but I... I can't. Well, no explanations are necessary. None whatever. Oh? I suppose you know a good deal about me by now. No. Only that you are Lady Diana, destination unknown. <laughs> At the risk of seeming impertinent again, I, uh... I do wish I knew more. At the risk of seeming trite, let me warn you. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> well, may I at least ask how long we'll be traveling together on this ship? You may not. Oh, now, look. Isn't this all very uh, mysterioso and whodunit? I don't want to be angry with you again, Mr. Rainsford. So suppose we let things go along my way and let it go at that? Well, if you insist. <laughs> That's how it stood for several days as we coasted down the West African shore. And then one afternoon I was speaking to the captain. He must have known that I was more than casually interested in Lady Diana because he managed to mention quite pointedly that she was disembarking that very evening. In 30 seconds I was knocking at the door of her cabin. In 35 seconds I was again in difficulties with Diana. Right up to my ears. Why, well, yes, Mr. Rainsford, I'm leaving the ship tonight. Why? Well, this, uh... This unheard of Bankara Island, whatever they call it, it's... Uh... It happens to be my destination. I suppose I shall be deeply flattered that Lance Rainsford, the gifted author and peerless hunter of big game, is interested. Oh, look, cut it out, will you? Then let me alone. I don't like what I'm doing any more than you do. What are you up to on that island? What is there there that attracts a woman like you, a, well, a rather distinguished American girl with an English title? But what is it? An illusion. Superstition that frightens sailors away from Bankar Island. Ship Trap Island, they call it. I'm investigating that superstition. 
Well, in that case, I'm going with you. No, Lance, no. Do you want to be mixed up with the murderers? We might have had great times together. Yeah. Yeah, we might have. Goodbye, Lance. Good hunting. I slept fitfully that night. Diana was gone. Somewhere back there in the darkness of a scarcely known island called Ship Trap, she was gone. And the ship was weaving dangerously through the rock-strewn channel of Bankara, adding to my uneasiness. At last I fell asleep, only to be awakened by a terrific grinding and crashing and the jangling of a bell and the heavy pounding on my door. Mr. Rainsford. Captain, what is it? We've struck a reef, sir. There's the devil to pay. We're in for it now. All hands! All hands! All hands! All hands! Sometime around dawn, the ship's boilers blew up. It was almost noon when I I staggered ashore on a coral beach, exhausted by hours of swimming, and I fell asleep just just out of reach of the hungry surf. Well, Mr. Rainsford, we meet again. Mm. Welcome to Ship Trap Island. Diane. Oh. Are you all right, Lance? Yeah. The, uh, the ship struck a reef. I thought that might have been it. Very lucky, I suppose. Other, uh, uh, no other survivors? No. Well, get up off that sand and let's be on the move. I don't want to be found here. Before. Hello there. Too late. Welcome. Welcome to Bankara Island. The fellow who approached us out of the towering jungle was over six feet tall, powerful, past middle age with bright black eyes that were set in a lean, dark face. The face of an aristocrat, neatly bearded. He wore hunting clothes and he carried a rifle. He stopped beside us. I am Vaskar Karlsefne. Who are you? Uh, my name is Lance Rainsford. Lance Rainsford? Yes, this is the, the Lady Diana. How do you do? Lance Rainsford. I'm delighted. Delighted. Really? Why? I've read every one of your books on big game hunting. Marvelous writing and flawless hunting logic throughout. The hospitality of my little empire is entirely yours. Well, thank you. You may enjoy my quarters. Uh, Shall we go? What do you say to that filet mignon, Rainsford? Can you match the Claridge's or the Barclay? It's uh, excellent, Casa. Lady Diana? The dinner is faultless, thank you. Ah, I am pleased that you are pleased. I should like to show you my collection of hunting trophies after dinner, Rainsford. Oh, yes, I'm uh, anxious to see them. You see, I have one passion. Hunting has been my life. I consider it the greatest sport in the world. For everyone except the quarry. Well, don't you approve of hunting, Lady Diana? As a sport, perhaps. The ruling passion, I doubt it. Shall we look at my guns and trophies now? Mm -hmm. Well, you have some magnificent heads here in your trophy room, Carl Stephanie. Magnificent. That Cape Buffalo, that's the... uh... That's the largest I've ever seen. Hurled me against the tree and fractured my skull, but I got the brood. Congratulations. I've, um, I've always considered the Cape Buffalo the most dangerous of all big game. Haven't you? No. The lion, then? All brute creatures are devoid of real intelligence or powers of reasoning. The most dangerous game of all is man. Man? Oh, but that's absurd. Of course, you, you don't hunt men. Oh, but one does, Mr. Bainsford. Armies and police forces, for example, are dedicated to the hunting down of human beings. I'm uh, sure that that isn't what Mr. Carl Sethne means. In any case, I quite agree with him. Man is the most dangerous game. My lady, you have the instincts of a great hunter. (laughs) I propose a lion hunt for tomorrow. Will the Lady Diana care to accompany us on our hunt tomorrow? If 
phone me as a spectator. I should be very happy to join you. Good. My man, Carrie, will knock on your door very early. Until tomorrow, then. Until tomorrow. Until tomorrow. Who is it, please? Rainsford. Lance. Oh. Hello. Come in. Diana, there's something going on here. I I don't quite understand. What don't you understand? Oh, any of this. You're, you're coming to this strange island. Your attitude toward me. Toward Cassetney. Your, your very strange behavior in the trophy room this evening. My theories of the chase, you mean? Diana, do you know Vascar Cassetney? No. Well, then, you do you know something... Uh, about him. Perhaps. Diana, if for any reason you're planning to, uh, to... Go on. To murder Carl Sapney. And if so... Well, aren't you going to deny it? No. Diana, I, I don't know what's happening here, what your secret is, but don't go any further with these things. Come away with me before it's too late. No. If Carl Sapney's your objective, you're no match for him. He is. We'll see. Well, what has he done? My husband also was a very great hunter. A fine shot. Oh? And a great, great man. Was, did you say? He was killed while hunting. With a friend. Oh. Cape buffalo? Lion? No, snake. Bitten by a poisonous snake? Oh, no. Shot. Carl Sapley. And we're going hunting tomorrow. All three of us. Diana, if you're planning on an accident tomorrow... That's... Accidents aren't planned. They happen. They just happen. Don't they? <laughs> Who's there? Who's there? Carl Sefney. Oh. Well, isn't it uh, rather late? I wanted to talk to you, Rainsford. About what? What's that? Hmm? Oh, my hunting dogs are a bit restless tonight. As I started to say, Rainsford, I wanted to speak to you about the Lady Diana. What about the Lady Diana? She proposes to murder me. How do you know that? This is enough that you seem to know it. Also, my man Carrie found her equipment on the beach, a veritable arsenal. She came here expressly to destroy me. Why? She fancies that I murdered her husband. And did you? Rainsford, you and I are hunters. We understand each other. Mm, up to a point. For both of us, hunting has become too easy. No animal has much of a chance with us anymore because its body and instinct is no match for our weapons and our reasoning power. And then, years ago, the inspiration came to me. I invented a new kind of game. What? An animal that could reason. There is no animal that can reason. There is one. Man. Man. The most dangerous game. Carl Safney, you must be mad. Man, the most dangerous game, but the female of the species is more <laughs> deadly than the male. You are mad. Am I? Or is the Lady <laughs> Diana mad? Mad and unsportsmanlike and wishing to murder me in cold blood, I at least will provide her with fair warning with a, a hunting knife and with a half hour start into the jungle. Tomorrow morning. And you, Rainsford, shall hunt with me. And if I refuse? I shall be obliged to hunt you. Ah, but you will not refuse. It is too delicious, too great sport for anyone whose hunting is his passion to refuse. Carl Sefney, I... I salute you. Ah. You have imagination, an audacious, original mind. May I say even genius. <laughs> I shall be honored to hunt with you in the morning. Excellent. Oh, this will be sport, Rainsford. You will not regret it. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'm sure I won't regret it. But you might, Mr. Carl Sefney. <laughs>
In a few moments, Frigid Air will bring you the second act of The Most Dangerous Game, starring Robert Cummings. It's true of a dress, it's true of a mechanism. The simplest design is the best design. And the meter miser that makes the cold in the Frigid Air refrigerator is the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. So simple that it uses less current than an ordinary light bulb. Why, there isn't a single fan or belt or pulley in the meter miser. The compressor has only two parts that move. What does this mean to you? Just this. You can look forward to long years of service with a frigid air refrigerator, long years of trouble-free service. For it stands to reason, parts that aren't there just can't cause trouble or wear. And you're sure of many other advantages, too, with a frigid air. Plenty of cold and plenty of room for all the food you want to keep refrigerated. Generous space for tall bottles. Special moist storage for fruits and vegetables. Frigidaire quick cube trays for fast ice service. Remember to see the new Frigidaires before you choose your next refrigerator. Remember the extra dependability, the extra conveniences they bring you. And remember, you're twice as sure with two great names. For Frigidaire is made only by General Motors. Now, Act Two of the most dangerous game. So then, Carl Stephanie and I were to hunt the most dangerous game of all, man. And the deadlier of the species, a woman, Lady Diana. Carl Stephanie was in high spirits at breakfast, Lady Diana quite unaware of the terrible prospect in store for her. Ah, I trust you both found breakfast satisfactory. Uh, excellent. Splendid. Good. Then we are prepared for the hunt. Lady Diana, my servant Carib will supply you with hunting clothes, food, moccasins, and a knife. Is that all? I'm to hunt lion with a knife? My dear lady, Mr. Rainsford and I are wholly in accord with your own belief that the most dangerous game is man. Mr. Rainsford, what's this man talking about? Oh, well, you see, Allow lady, me. We have added an exquisite refinement to your theory, my dear Diana. Rainsford and I are going to hunt woman. I think I understand. You will have a knife and a half-hour start. And that's exactly how you murdered my husband, isn't it? You hunted him down like a wild animal, too, didn't you? We shall start almost immediately. You know, I think I rather welcome this contest. In that way, I shall be killing you in self-defense. Oh, Rainsford, what did I tell you? This woman has brains and spirit. This shall be capital sport. I shall be sorry to have to kill you too, Mr. Rainsford. A half hour passed after Diana had gone out through the great front gate. And then, after her full cry, Diana was fleeing brilliantly, doubling and redoubling over her trail, playing the fox and playing it magnificently. But as darkness approached... The trail became fresher and clearer, and I had no chance to dispose of Carl Stephanie. He had taken his man Carib along to keep watchful eye over me. And then suddenly, Carl Stephanie ahead of me held up his hand and stopped. Stopped? She's in that tree lying against that heavy branch. Yes, I see her. Courtesy of the hunt, friends, for... Will you fire first? Thank you. It was impossible to miss. Besides, if I missed, Carl Stephanie would not. And he would shoot not to kill, but to wound. To prolong the sadistic, insane sport. I took careful, careful aim. Squeezed the trigger slowly. Evenly. Slowly. You got her! She's down! Yes, I'll go have a look. But leave your rifle here, Rainsford. Well, she may be only wounded. Carib and I will keep you both safely covered. Yes, all right. No nonsense now, Rainsford. You understand? Of course, no nonsense. Diana. Diana, get up and run for it. Are oh, you all right? All right. Thanks for the cleanness. Yes, run for it. Run. Right. I wonder where Carl Setney is. He knows where we are. He's playing with us. He'll be back prolonging the fun, that's all. And we're defenseless. Yes. Yes, but we can't close in on him to use it. I mean, what wood is there here in the jungle that would make a good bow? A bow? A bow. 
Yes, I get it. A bow and arrow. Can we do it? My boot laces. They'll make a good bowstring. Great idea, Diana. Give me that knife. Now, wait here for me. Get ready, Diana. Here he comes down the trail. Ready. Range. 60 yards approximately. Too far for this makeshift bow. 50. 45. 35 is best. 40. 35. Give me 30 to be sure. 33. 2. 1. No! You've hit him in the leg. Another arrow quick before he gets out of range. Here, easy now. Congratulations. You do well. You have taken this round, but I shall return to the combat in exactly one hour. <laughs> Keep up the fine work. Quick, he'll never give us a chance like this again. I know. All right, now, shoot again. Oh, it broke. Oh, the devil it did. It broke, it broke, it broke just when we had him. It broke. Come on, let's get out of here. It broke, it broke, it broke. <laughs> Later, I tied our knife to a sapling and bent the sapling to the ground, holding it there with a delicate trigger device drawn across the trail where Carl Sefney would pass. And then Diana and I retreated into the jungle again, waiting, waiting, waiting. We've got him. We've got something. My compliment, friend. He's alive. You killed my man, Carrie. A valuable man. Carabin, we've lost our knife in him. You give me excellent support. <laughs> I'm really delighted. I will return soon with help. You see, you force my hand at every turn. Good work. Brilliant. Today, or now. We haven't even a knife now. We gambled everything and lost. All we can do now is run. Yes, run. Run like wild beasts. Run. Run! <laughs> Listen. Bloodhounds. Oh, Kara. I'm finished. Just a little further, please. You go on. I can't. can't. Diana, before it's too late, he's almost upon us again. Well, my friends, is it quite finished? Too late. I've tied up my dogs. I did not think that they would be necessary. (laughs) All right, you madmen. Shoot and be done with it. To be sure. Well, too bad, Ransford. Too bad. He raised his rifle and we stood there, helpless, swaying. I wouldn't leave while Diana was there, so we... we waited. I can't. I... Diana! Ladies first, of course. Now then, you. Diana was down. At last, I turned to run, took two steps, and suddenly the ground fell away beneath me, and I crashed down, down into darkness, and lay there a moment. I was stunned, shaken, looking up at a square of moonlit sky, some 15 feet above me. And then, Carl Stephanie's head and shoulders were silhouetted against the sky as he spoke to me. Why, you really astonish me, Rainsford, falling down there into this crudest of lion pitfalls, I... Ah, but then you are very tired and not your usual shrewd self. Well then, farewell, good hunter. It has been exciting, has it not? He reached back for his rifle, and then suddenly cried out and flung his hand back the door, and he plunged headlong into the street almost on top of me. Instantly I was on him, but I was grappling for his throat with one hand, looking for a stone or other weapon with the other, on the floor of the pit. No, you don't, Rainsford. No, you don't. Ah, suddenly, I felt something hard and metallic under my head. And then Carl Stephanie was twisting on top of me. His thumb was on my windpipe, and I, I, I raised my arm, and I brought the finger of my hand down on Carl Stephanie's powerful back. Ah! So. Lance, Lance, are you all right down there? Diana, are you all right? I collapsed just as he fired, I guess. I pushed him into the pit. It was our only chance. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I'm all right. I'm coming out. How'll you get out? I'll cut steps in the wall. How? 
I've got a knife. A knife? Yes, believe it or not, I... I found it down here. I found it. Here I come. Ah. So that's that. That finishes Carl Setney. Lance. Let me see the knife you found down there. Here. There's something inscribed on the blade. Can you read it in the moonlight? I don't have to read it. I gave it to Robert. It says, To Robert, my beloved husband, on our second anniversary, with all my love, Diane. Oh. Carl Sefney drove my husband into that same pit and murdered him. Now it is my husband's knife that has destroyed his kill. Oh! Good work, Robert. Excellent. Sleep well. And Lance Rainsford, you did well, too. An epigram came to our assistance in catching Carl Stephanie. An epigram? Yeah. The epigram about marriage. An institution whereby a man chases a woman until she finally catches him. In a moment, Robert Cummings will return to tell you about next week's Hollywood Star Time presentation, Intermezzo. If your community has not been on Daylight Saving Time, Hollywood Star Time will come to you at a new hour starting next Saturday. Please consult your local newspaper for new time. This radio production, which came to you direct from Hollywood, was written by Milton Geiger, with music supervised by Lionel Newman, and was produced under the direction of Robert L. Redd. The RKO picture, Sister Kenny, which stars Rosalind Russell and Alexander Knox, is being shown currently throughout the country. Hollywood Star Time is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire home appliances, electric refrigerators, electric ranges, electric water heaters, home freezers, and a wide variety of refrigerating and air conditioning equipment for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. And here again is Robert Cummings. Well, Wendell, art is, lo- art is long and time is fleeting, but... Next week's show on Hollywood Star Time, in my opinion, requires special mention. I understand you're starring Herbert Marshall in that fine emotional drama, Intermezzo. Is that right? That's right, Bob. Something new has been added. Oh, yes. Besides starring on next Saturday's show, uh, Herbert Marshall will be here to begin his pleasant duties as a regular host of Hollywood Star Time. It sounds like an even more distinguished show than ever, and I'll I'll be not sure to miss it. (laughs) Good enough, Robert. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next Saturday, Intermezzo, starring Herbert Marshall. This is Wendell Nile speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Station.